All right, everybody. Today, we're excited to the welcome to the show. Me. I'm going solo today. So this is this is me. You got Paul Fuller. I'm Chief Revenue Officer over here at Membrane. And uh, I, I thought it would make sense to kick off this season with an episode about why we're actually doing this season and give you give you some background on it. I think uh, in, what we're diving into is we're calling it the three T's of developing six scalable sales organizations. And those are really three things. It's finding, recruiting, and maintaining the right talent. So the people in your organization, the right people, the right seats. Um, and also that falls into that is how you organize that talent. So we're going to have some great, uh, great guests on that. The second is transformation. Um, I lump this, lump a lot of things in here. Uh, it used to be just sales training, all right? We're going to just, how do we upskill our, our team? But it really is a lot more than that. It's how we tie together sales methodology with the processes that are needed, with how we support people on an ongoing basis, how we train the talent we have continually to get better uh, and embed those things in their, and embed you know, reinforcement in their everyday working environment, how we don't miss the opportunity to take um, great insights from one particular rep and transform the organization. So really, when I say transformation, it's about transforming your organization into a sales culture, into a B2B scalable sales culture that is driving results. And there's a lot that goes into that. And the third piece, the third T here is technology. A technology is a critical piece in, in aligning with ensuring you get the right talent, ensuring you have the methodologies, you have the processes, the systems, the, the training, the materials, the content, all the enablement. Technology generally becomes the way these days that we're able to uh, drive togetherness and cohesiveness in those things. Uh, we're we're so apart from each other generally. We're usually in our own offices. We're usually on digital means. We're 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 connecting over Zoom and Google Meet and other things. We're, we see each other in person a whole lot less. Offices. Uh, are a whole lot uh, less crowded these days. So technology is just a critical piece for this. And there's been an explosion of technology recently. And we actually are of the mind that it's, how do we find the right technology and fit for your culture and your team is really critical. So those are the three T's. Now I'm going to dive into some some of the stats on the state of each of those things that are going on right now, uh, each of these three areas. And and then over the course of the season, we're going to bring in experts, uh, experts on talent development. We're going to bring experts on methodology, creating and changing cultures. Like we have great guests coming on uh, around this to how, for example, you, you change your sales culture to be hunting the biggest of the big deals. If that's what you want to be, we have great people coming on to that that how you transform organizations and technology. What is some of the critical things out there, the critical pieces in sales enablement and the technology that we have? So why this? Why did we dive into this? Well, first off, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the people and the talent. So there is a skills gap. There's a massive skills gap that's going on out there. Um, 69% of organizations right now believe they have a skills gap uh, in their organizational needs uh, based on can a salesperson actually execute the things that we're asking them to do? 69%. That's a huge gap. Um, and, and that goes a lot to who we're hiring, but also how we're onboarding them, how we're bringing them on, how we're getting them up to speed. And then to, to tie together with that, Retaining that talent. So we think we found good talent. We still think there's a big skills gap. Now, retaining that talent, it's in the sales organizations and overall, 86% of people would switch their job uh, if they had a job where they felt there was one or more chances to grow. Meaning we have a lot of people that want to be free agents. That's a challenge. So how do we do it? We already feel there's a gap. People are skipping, skipping, and the churn rate for salespeople in 2023 was actually 35. percent Right, so a 3.5 out of every 10 people hired in sales was gone within a year. 
um, that is a huge cost. That is a massive cost because the cost of replacing those individuals is about 2x the employee's annual salary. And that is to the, the overall organization. When you start to look at things like uh, lost revenue from the sales rep, you start to look at things uh, like the uh, amount of time recruiting that you have to spend. So sales positions are hard. They're hard to fill. So we're going to dive into that. And And while this whole talent thing goes on, people are still trying to get better. Organizations are still trying to get better uh, and grow revenue through B2B sales. And I wholeheartedly agree with that. I think we have to continue to elevate the sales profession. But when we look at it, 81% of, of organizations out there are saying, hey, um, I really need to uh, improve my sales and marketing. There's not a whole lot of people that, that feel that they're really good at it. So that talent. That talent is really, really effective. And then the how we scale and use that talent, how we organize that talent. Uh, and I am going to be throwing a lot of stats out today. So make sure you have a notebook. Make sure you're writing this stuff down or just ping me and I'll send you my notes for it. But um, Gardner uh, is saying that about 59%, so roughly six out of 10 sellers say their leadership doesn't understand how to motivate them. Um. And we're also thinking that leadership, about about 70% in that same study, said their leadership is overly optimistic. <laughs> so they're out there. Say so to wrap that up, talent right now, leadership is thinking there's a big skills gap, right? Individuals in sales are ready to jump ship uh, if there's a, if what they see is a better opportunity. So they're not committed to a culture in a company like they used to be. And churn is showing that 3.5 out of every 10 people. That's costing us a lot of money. So there, how we bring on talent, how we onboard them is critical, how we find the right people for our culture uh, and your culture and to drive that effectiveness um, and how we show that is, is really, really, really important. And it's a huge cost to the business. And improving on these things, improving on your ability to drive the right talent and drive attention can absolutely exponentially impact your business. There's something that we're seeing now overall, and I think you've you've probably noticed it as well if you're into really into sales, but the, the mindset and the model is shifting. The model is, is focusing more on, uh, across a lot of organizations, the model is focusing more on uh, a full cycles rep. So how do we get a really good full cycle rep that can be diving in there that wants to be invested in, wants to stick with a company, wants to be able to, to stand around the two to three to four to five years and continue that exponential growth within the organization. That's a tough, tough thing to do. All right. So the second, um, the second area that we're going to dive into is this, this whole idea called transformation. And uh, there is a big um, changing landscape right now. Uh, and I could, we're going to talk a whole lot about it with a lot of our guests. I, I just had one, um, one episode that I recorded with a guest that, uh, he's going to blow your mind on this. I'm just so excited for, for this to get out to the world about some of the reasons why, uh, the sales landscape is changing, but I can tell you, I can tell you the exact reason, the exact things that are happening, right? So our competencies out there are decreasing. So overall, that skills gap, our ability to do um, overall relationship building as a skill in society and in sales is going down. And decision making, the ability to lead and guide decisions, as well as the ability to make good decisions, is really decreasing uh, across across the, the whole uh, area of sales and um, acquisition of products, right? There's a there's a major reason for this. The reason for this is that we we're living in the Peloton world, right? We we are living in the where you can hop on a bike and ride by yourself and feel like you're riding with other people, but you're doing it in a highly, highly, highly distributed manner. And so you didn't you you're not getting the same social clues cues um, to get together and actually make decisions. People are are struggling to make them. If you start to look at the Jolt Effect, uh, that's a great book 
uh, on relationships and decision making and how those are decreasing and what we need to do to change. So I, I highly recommend that book. It's a lot of fun to read. Um, have a podcast episode on that with uh, with Matt if you want to check that out from from season one. While those things are going down, so think about this: skills, relationship, and decision making are all decreasing. Think about this: the what is all increasing is the speed of business, the complexity of the business, and the options that you have available in market. Those are all going up all the time. So change becomes the only constant that we have in this world, especially during sales, uh, in sales, and when we're trying to lead and guide and influence others. And so if our, our competencies for leadership are going down and, and our need to lead is going up, we need to break that curve. And that's where I think there's some really critical things that are uh, in this transformational area that need to happen. And they're not necessarily new things. They're not new ideas. They're going back to the basics and ensuring that we're doing them really, really, really well. So things like a sales methodology, if you don't have, and we're going to talk about what a method, what I believe a methodology is, you can look on Google and all those things and check it out. I brought the right definition is, but what is the way that you train your organization? And I mean, the whole organization on how to discover the best way to lead, serve, and wayfind your customers, right? So that's that's what a methodology is. How do we train our team to communicate around what it means to work with us, right? So what are the types of questions we need to understand to understand what they're working? What are the how do we ask those? What are the types of questions we need to um, understand if they're feeling pain or their vision or the gap between those things? That that is a methodology. It's the ability to the ability and skills that you need to walk someone through that process. That is highly, highly critical that you train now more than ever on that. You have it documented now more than ever on that. And that you reinforce that continually, continually, continually through your technology and the other things that are happening, right? If you want the best, you need to set up a system and a methodology that gives you the best. Otherwise, you're done. So if you're not, if you're not doing things like systematically role-playing with your teams on how to ask questions and, and how to walk through a sales methodology, you're missing out. The second thing there is processes. And so a methodology is different than a process. Think of a process as a, as a checklist. You absolutely need to have a checklist for how sales is supposed to interact with the rest of the organization and what they need from sales to be able to do that really well. And and that they can be combined. They can be combined in a step stage and stepwise methodology and sales process that dives dives in. Membrane actually specializes in that and how we bring that to the technology. But if you don't have both of those things, the skills and the ability to ask somebody that you've agreed upon is necessary for your organization to do, do things well in market and the process by which your organization executes within the market, uh, you're missing out. And there, there's some great stats on that. I mean, I could pull stats. You can, and I, I'd urge you go to Google and search for, uh, stats on increase on on uh, sales organizations that have uh, good methodology and process. It used to be groundbreaking news. It's not anymore. It, but it's still very, very impactful news. It's it's something like uh, eight out of ten of the top performing organizations have this, and it depends on what study you read. Um, but they have a well defined methodology and a well defined um, uh, processes by which to operate. Now. I think the reason that that's really important is because uh, you need to be able to do two things. You need to be able to manage and coach to a specific methodology and set of circumstances that are actually good. The days of being able to say, hey, make 200 calls and you're, I guarantee you're going to get five or 50 connects out of that. You're going to have 10 conversations using this script and you're going to have three, uh, three meetings and we're going to get two deals out of that. Those are gone. That's um, you might want to run those stats, uh, it, but the, the days of that level of predictability are gone. 
communication mechanisms are changing so fast um, that that the ability to anticipate based on um, those type of things is really, really, really hard. The things that are you can do and is really good to do is you can implement a ongoing coaching program. So if you have a um, and there we have some very good stats on the impact of coaching. Uh, on individuals and why this is helpful. But to have a good coaching program, you need that methodology and process in place. And what I mean by coaching is not is not uh, um, saying, hey, you know, give me give me 20 more reps, get down and give me 20. It is not. I just did a post on uh, LinkedIn the other day of Bobby Knight shouting at somebody. Uh, it, it, it is not berating people. What it is, is how do we understand the level of maturity that somebody has within within a sales methodology and how do we bring them to the next to the next best level of maturity to help them succeed All right so and teams that do that and do that well and have a systemized method for diving in and actually coaching people not just doing a one time training and then leaving them go but a, an actual systematic coaching uh, are crushing it they're actually crushing it um, top tier, if it consider a top tier sales organization, they're three, spend three times more time coaching than the average organization. 88% of world-class sales orgs prioritize this individual sales coaching. Um, and then there's a t research actually shows, and there's, there's a, a lot of great research out there as well, but a 28% higher win rate with coaching with basic dynamic coaching that you can you can uh bring in and that is that's think of it you could do it as a once a week you could do it as a uh, uh, as needed on deals the thing is is that people generally want to get better a lot of times we don't know how to get them better so the best thing to do is go back to your methodology go back to your process and start asking questions that's all Start asking questions for how they're leveraging it, how they're going to dive in, where are the areas they feel they need to get better. Do some skills assessments, understand them, and then coach them on that to get, to get better, right? Um, that is absolutely 100% critical. Coaching is um, the, the, the worldwide industry is going from something like $2.5 billion to $4.8 billion over the course of the next uh, three to four years. It's massively increasing. Um, and the reason is, is because people can find a lot of information out there. You can find information at your fingertips. You can as well in the context of, you know, if you have a good sales methodology and a good process, what people really want to know is how do I leverage that information to impact my life for the better and the better for those around them. And, and coaching does that. Telling somebody to do it doesn't do that. Coaching them really helps that. So coaching has to be a part. So I've done in transformation, I have methodology, I have process, I have coaching to that. And I would highly, highly, highly recommend continual assessment. So continual assessment of what you're doing. Uh, and you do that for a number of ways. The biggest way is just being able to manage well. So not manage at the end of a at the end of a month where uh, you're discounting heavily at the end of the month because you didn't hit your month's numbers. You are managing well at the beginning of a month. You're setting up proper cadences, proper KPIs, and people know what they need to do to self-lead. And so that is really highly important. So sales organizations need to understand who is going to be the best manager within them, and they need to assess that talent. Uh, this goes back to talent, but it, this is a big part of transformation. They need to assess that talent and put the right person in the job, not just necessarily the person that has sold the most in the job. So uh, if you want any more information on that, that makes a huge, huge, huge difference in how you're operating. Uh, and it's one of the things that we're going to talk about throughout the course of uh, this season. So I'm pretty pumped about that. If you want more information, just just reach out. You can always reach me um, on LinkedIn and just mention the podcast and I'll, I'll make sure I uh, get back to you quick. The uh, third area that I'm going to dive into is technology. And so what's what's been fascinating is we've had an explosion 
an absolute explosion of technology over the course of the past, well, 25 years. Um, was fascinating to me is I saw this graph uh, recently and sales productivity. And this is just in the past, just since uh, Q1 2022. Sales productivity as measured by quota attainment has gone down from 53% in Q1 2022 to 42.8% uh, near the end of 2023. And I don't have any more um, recent stats than that. So despite all this massive amount of technology that's out there, and despite people clamoring for the next best thing, and despite sales enablement becoming a having a seat at the table in in the largest of organizations in terms of the leadership group, which I actually believe is smart. I'm not going against that. I actually believe that's incredibly smart. Uh, we're still having issues, right? We're not performing better than we used to as an organ as a um, total output of the sales industry. Where it seems that we're actually becoming a little bit less efficient. And so, again, I think I think one of the things, one of the reasons there is because we've relied on too much on the technology. If I look at the three T's, we've relied too much on the technology to break through the noise. Instead of building our sales teams and our salespeople as leaders with the ability to break through the noise. And that's that's something that's really an important distinction. I sell technology for a living. I love technology. I think you need the right technology. I think you need the right technology to enable your leaders, your sales people, to get them the right process, the right methodology, the right continual training, uh, the right onboarding and all that. So they are able to individually improve their skills enough and leverage what you bring them to break through the noise out there. Because noise is always going to increase. Uh, so it's not the next greatest technology that's going to solve that for you. At least I don't believe it is. I mean, we have AI coming out. Uh, well, it's coming out. It's here. Uh, I'm using it in my product. We're using it all over. You know, I use it uh, myself. It's got some great, absolutely amazing things uh, that it can do. Um, I do always say the one thing about AI is that it's AI. It's artificial intelligence. Uh, I'm very favor. I, I lean to the RI, the real intelligence. So I'm always going to lean towards empowering your people to become self-leaders uh, and to break through that noise. But back to technology, I think AI and, and the technology that comes out has some wonderful uses. I'm just going to urge you to focus on, and this, this whole thing will urge you, this whole season is going to urge you to focus on the technology through a lens of how it actually empowers your team to perform more effectively not how you can simply layer technology to get the next great thing. Because I think that's based on all the research and everything I've seen, it's a waste of money, right? If, if you are going to drive a culture that sells, your culture that sells does need technology as a base point for it. It does need to have a really, really, really strong and effective uh, sales process uh, organizer call it CRM, you call it whatever you want, but it's got to be able to give somebody a really good picture of the client base, really good picture of their prospects, how they operate, what to do next, all those things. All that is really important. It's got to take our stats. It's got to measure our pipeline. It's got to have the sales methodology in it. But make sure you're always putting things through the lens of, does this technology help me improve my talent? Uh, and does this technology help me transform my organization to becoming a revenue producing machine that I need it to be? All right. So that, that is the episode for today. Dang, I went on way longer than I thought I would. I hope this was really helpful for you. Um, I can't wait for the season. I have some of the top people around the world uh, joining me. We're going to get people from Australia, from New Zealand, from South Africa, from the U.S. I have sales leaders. I have top sales executives. Uh, I have people that have started their own businesses. I have um, everybody that's done it has had uh, wonderful success in sales, sales enablement, talent and recruiting. Uh, and so we're going to dive into these three T's. I hope this was effective. If you need any of the stats, just ping me. Ping me on LinkedIn. I'd love a chance to talk with you. 
Uh, and if I don't get back to you immediately, please don't uh, uh, get upset. I will absolutely get back to you. Um, and we'll we'll go through any of the things that you, you want to learn about. Uh, have an amazing day, everybody. I'm going to go to the outro. But before I go to that outro, I'm going to say, please do me a favor and uh, subscribe. Subscribe so you get the rest of this episode. Uh, like it if it's on social media, if you saw this on social media. And as always, keep shining bright. The way we sh- the way we elevate the sales profession is by building ourselves and building our companies to shine as bright as we possibly can, to serve, lead, and to wayfind better than anyone else, and to take absolute pride in the fact that we are in the profession of sales. Have an amazing day, everybody. I'll talk to you soon.